know what this is. So, SmackDown Live this week is in Daniel Bryan's hometown. Finally, you know, he gets a big reception, as always, and he's out there and saying that, yeah, it's great to be back home, and the last time that he was there, he had to make the di most difficult decision of his life. Yeah, but he wants to make th the best matches as possible, and he's about to be a dad. Congratulations, Bree and Daniel. Well, Brian Danielson. Cue to Miz. Miz comes out and says, uh, boo hoo, Daniel Bryan can't wrestle anymore. He had to retire. Uh, and he's like, what are you even doing out here anyway? Since you can't wrestle anymore. You know, you're, you know. And Daniel Bryan's like, not being able to wrestle hasn't stopped you from entering this WWE ring. That's the line of the night, okay? Because that's nothing but fact. And the crowd basically got in the way of Miz because the Miz was like, when my hand goes up, you shut. And, and, and that didn't work because the crowd was outworking Miz. The Miz got frustrated and he couldn't talk. Wow, okay. I Yes, he's annoying on the mic anyway, but that's funny. Q Baron Corbin. Corbin comes out and he's like, look, he tells the Miz to shut up, <laughs> you know, but the Miz, being the Miz, he asks Baron Corbin for help. He's like, me and you can take out everybody else in the Elimination Chamber and it'll just be you and me. Let the best man win. Yeah, like the usual pussy that he is. But Baron Corbin, he's like, or I can take you out right now. And while he was going to the Miz, the Miz, again, hide behind his wife. Maurice gets in front of him, and, and the Miz is like, oh, oh, No, no. And you guys, and people that take this guy seriously, why? Cue Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose even said that, hey, you can't take the Miz seriously when he what he, he wearing what he was wearing saying that he looked like a shoe <laughs> hilarious and then he said that you know be careful might not be able to walk out elimination chamber Q AJ Styles AJ Styles comes in and he points out something very interesting that he holds wins with everybody that was in that ring well except Daniel Bryan and except Maurice they're both retired and and yeah, Maurice is the best wrestler that lives in her household. But anyway, he points that out. And the, the Miz tries to speak saying he's the most must-see and all that crap because it's not true. And Daniel Bryan is like, whoa, 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 whoa. And announces a fatal four-way. A fatal four-way. The funniest thing about at the beginning of this match, Baron Corbin was, you know, being talked to by the Miz. And the Miz was like, help me, help me, help me, help me, take them out, take them out. And Baron Corbin was like, no, haven't you forgot? He is the lone wolf, you idiot. So, even at the beginning of the match, when Ambrose was to the Miz, Miz was like, ah, and ran and went underneath the ropes. Coward. But, this match... Yeah, it was a prelude to what could happen at Elimination Chamber with all four or five or six motherfuckers in there at the same time trying to eliminate each other. Yeah, this wasn't a fatal four-way elimination. It was just a fatal four-way. And again, Baron Corbin showed me something in this match. He keeps getting higher and higher on me for showing me something in the ring. It was kind of fucked up what happened to AJ Styles because AJ Styles was trying to slingshot himself in the ring by going on top of the ropes. But when he did that, Baron Corbin hit him and just AJ Styles just went <laughs> and landed all fucked up. But when Baron Corbin hit the Miz and the Miz went down, yes, they point out that he's former uh, Golden Gloves and stuff like that. But it's kind of funny how they're trying to make Baron Corbin something now. After winning the Andre the Giant Battle Royal last year and not being anything, but now they're trying to make him into a be an incredible threat, which they are doing a fucking good job. And he actually won this match. But this could have been AJ Styles' match. It should have been. Why? Because at the end of the match, he had the Miz and Maurice pulled the Miz out. 
And then AJ Styles turns around and eats at end of days. So Baron Corbin wins. Baron Corbin wins. He's the only one in that match that hasn't tasted WWE gold yet. And he won that match. That's saying something. Okay? Yes, he's not going to win a chamber match, but at least that says something. So you have Randy Orton getting threatened by Luke Harper. Luke Harper basically was like, yeah, you stole my family and I'm going to cut the head off the Viper and I want the Viper to feel pain at the Elimination Chamber. Yeah, he said that cutting the head off the Viper is not enough. He just wants him to feel pain. He just wants to hurt the Viper. So at Elimination Chamber, they're going to have a match. whoop did he do Speaking of whoop did he do and I'm not going to go into this, there was a big segment between Natalia and Nikki Bella. They were both via satellite and they had to be separated. I'm not going to go into that. If you want me to go into that crap, then post a comment below and request it and I'll get to it at a later date and tell you how I really feel about this feud. But as of right now, no. It has no room on this room on this review report because I don't fucking care about them. I just don't. So, you have Dolph Ziggler against Apollo Crews. A, another fucking match that we didn't really fucking care about. And Apollo Crews actually fucking wins and Ziggler snaps again. He goes and he gets a chair and he smacks Apollo Crews. Cue Kalisto. What do you know? Kalisto gets the upper hand, tries to Salisto del Sol, and gets hung on the fucking top rope by Dolph Ziggler. Oh, huh, chair. Hmm. Have a seat, Kalisto. Oh, have another seat, Apollo. Again, is anyone taking Dolph Ziggler seriously at this point? Because I remember years ago when he cashed in Money in the Bank against Alberto Del Rio. That was the biggest pop. That was the biggest reaction he's ever had. What happened? Yeah, so he's walking in the back, Dolph Ziggler, and he gets stopped by Daniel Bryan, and Daniel Bryan's like, what are you doing? So every time you lose, you're going to throw a fit, you're going to throw a temper tantrum and hit people with chairs, and Dolph was just like, I'm just going to get out of here. But Dolph throws a fit, and he's like, I can beat both of them at the same time, and Daniel Bryan's like, okay, that's a good idea. So at Elimination Chamber, why don't you have a handicap match? You against Kalisto and Apollo Crews. <sighs> Does anyone take Dolph Ziggler seriously? I would like to know. Huh. Speaking of not taking shit seriously, there was a dual contract signing in this ring between four women. There was the Becky and Mickey James contract signing. Why? Because there's no title on the line or no, no nothing on the line, really. And then there was Naomi contract signing with Alexa Bliss. Once again, why? Because I just can't take Alexa Bliss going against Naomi seriously. Especially since it's Naomi. Now, now I'm going to say this right now. If Naomi wins this title, I will stand right here and I will eat my fucking words. Okay? I will do that. I will say that I was wrong and I'll eat my words. But until then, no. Okay? I just can't take them. I, no. And the segment drawed out. It was too long because Mickey wouldn't shut up about herself, about the reason why the women's division got the revolution is because of her and she's a six time champion and yeah. <sighs> just yeah. Yeah, I, I just can't go into all of that because I can't take neither of those feuds seriously. I just and it breaks down, duh. <laughs> who who thought that a contract signing was going to end peacefully? They rarely do. So, you get a 12-man tag team match. 12-man tag. Wow, we still have tag teams in this division? We, we still have tag team champions? We haven't seen shit in a while. And last week, there was all this action, but still no match. And... So, American Alpha teamed up with Bree Zango and Heath and Rhino against the Usos, the Vaude Villains, and the Ascension. And I can't believe that these words are about to be uttered out. The Ascension got the pin, and they got a win. I 
I don't know. I, I can't even wrap my fucking head around that because to me, it's too late. There's nothing that they can do for us to take the Ascension seriously at this point. But that's just me. So, you get Cena versus Orton for the 20th billionth time. And they try to hype it up to say that this is their first time ever that they're going to face each other on SmackDown Live. Are you kidding me? After they played their story rivalry. And this could be the main event at WrestleMania. They better throw some speed bumps. They better fucking throw that away. They better have another main event at WrestleMania that we'll actually fucking care about. They better fucking do something else. So, during the match, Bray Wyatt was in the corner of Randy Orton. So, this was a typical Cena-Orton match. Wasn't great, but wasn't terrible. It, yeah. So when the referee gets knocked out because Randy Orton was about to get the fuck you, but he held onto the ropes. And as he got pulled from the ropes, mysteriously, feet hits referee. Referee goes rolling out. So Bray Wyatt gets in and starts to do some interfering. He tries to do the Sister Abba RKO, but to no avail. You know, Cena attacks Orton. He turns around. He eats a Sister Abigail anyway. Luke Harper comes down to the ring and, yeah, raises his arms and there's words between Harper and Wyatt. And Bray Wyatt was like, go back. Luke Harper turns around like he's about to leave and turns around and gives him that fucking clothesline. And Bray Wyatt yeah, leaves the ring because he gets clotheslined out of the ring. Next thing you know, Randy Orton slithers in and he tries to RKO. Harper pushes him away. Cena catches him, gives him the fuck you. Referee wakes up, gets in, cover, one, two, three. And basically that's the end of the fucking show. Now, it wasn't a bad SmackDown, but there were a couple fucking segments that I just couldn't stomach. And I just can't go over those in my review report. And it has to do with the fucking women's division on this show. And then there's the tag teams. The tag teams aren't really shit either. They need to do something from both of those fucking divisions soon as fucking possible. So we us so all of us can take them 100% seriously. So that was SmackDown Live. What did you think about the show? Am I full of shit? Yeah, it, thumbs up, thumbs down. I, I would like to hear your opinions. I would like to read your opinions because I'm always up to a debate about wrestling. And don't forget, yeah, hit that like button, hit subscribe. I'm here every week doing wrestling videos, updates, and reports about WWE. And if yes, I need to branch out to do others, to other shows. But hell, I barely have the time, and yeah, I work for a living, and YouTube is not my, it's not my job. Yeah, I'm still a beginner here. Drop kicks, body slams, throwing motherfuckers over the top rope, both feet hitting the floor. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. This is the theme, and I'll see you later. Credits.